2019. It's all done and dusted. Well, not really, actually. It's still going for a few more days. Like, Nintendo is still streaming a lot of their games. We're getting inside look at even Microsoft's games, and new announcements are dropping each and every day. Like, apparently, Super Mario Maker 2 is getting its online fixed, so we can play with our friends. See, Nintendo, they just keep on listening to what we want, as long as we poke and prod them until we get our way. <laughs> Looking at you, Banjo-Kazooie and Smash. All in all, despite a slow start to the conferences, I had a really great time this year. But what were the best parts, and what were the worst parts? There were so many announcements, so many cool things, most of them were during Nintendos, but I want to talk about all of those as sort of an E3 wrap-up. Flesh out some of the really cool things I didn't really get a chance to talk about. And then just laugh at the bad and cringy parts of E3. Looking at you, Bethesda and Ubisoft. <laughs> With all that said, let's just freaking go! I'm still really hyped up from this whole thing. Smash like, hit flip on the subscribe button, all the other stuff I usually say. Okay, to start with, I did a bunch of predictions leading into E3, and I want to touch on how right or wrong I was. Actually, I'm not trying to boast my own roast here, but I was pretty spot on. I said that EA would probably have nothing to show other than Star Wars, and... EA had nothing to show other than Star Wars. I said that Bethesda would show Wolfenstein and Doom Eternal, and other than that, not really have much to show because they announced Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 way too early, and that happened. I think the only things I really got wrong wrong was I said that Square Enix might have kind of a quiet year, and oh boy, yeah, I was wrong wrong. And I said that Nintendo wouldn't announce anything new, they would focus on the games that we know nothing about. And while they did do that second thing, oh boy, wasn't there just a ton of new exciting announcements. But enough of all of that, I want to talk about the best things, just for me personally, the things that excited me the most about each one of these conferences and announcements that we got over the last few days. What? I haven't... <laughs> oh. Are you kidding me? What? What? But on Switch would be nice. Can we get the Switch announcement? Oh, oh tonight! Wow. We'll start with EAs. I really do love the look of the new Star Wars game. I thoroughly enjoyed Star Wars games back in the GameCube PC era of Star Wars games. Like, Bounty Hunter was incredible, but the Jedi Knight Academy games and the Knights of the Old Republic, like, those were how you make Star Wars games. And finally, in Jedi Fallen Order, it looks like they have taken heavy inspiration from those games. Like, I can't tell you, it's such a small thing, but I can't tell you how much I've wanted a single-player Star Wars action-adventure story-driven game where you can throw your lightsaber and force bring it back. Like, just that mechanic alone I have missed in Star Wars games. Not to mention now you can stop lasers in their tracks and then force bring the person that shot that laser towards you and have the laser hit themselves. Oh man, I look forward to that game. <laughs> okay, the best parts of Microsoft. I have my top three and only one of them is really a new game announcement and that was Fantasy Star Online 2. Now here is why. I do not play MMOs. I don't play online games and the reason being I just love single player story driven games and I don't really love playing games that never end. However, there has been a few of these kind of games that I've always had my eye on and thought, yeah, I would like to try that. Elder Scrolls Online is one. One of them. Final Fantasy Online is another one, and the main one, honestly, has been Fantasy Star. And there's a really weird reason as to why. <laughs> Way back in the blockbuster renting days, I actually rented Fantasy Star for GameCube, and I brought it home, and I couldn't play it because I needed online. That was very intriguing to me, but I didn't have a way of doing it, so I returned to the game and got a different one. But it left this want in me to play Fantasy Star Online. And here it is being announced during Microsoft's event, and I am looking forward to finally diving into my first MMORPG. The other two things I liked about Xboxes was, of course, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want him as a main character or a side character, but I just love the man. I love John Wick, I love Matrix, I love Keanu. And the third Third thing was Gears of War, and I'm kind of scraping here to get a third thing because I've been knowing about this game. We didn't even get to see gameplay during the event while they were streaming it after the fact, but I am a huge Gears of War fan, so even just hearing it talked about and seeing it draw ever closer, getting those beta dates and then the release date for the game, yeah, no, I am definitely ready for that. Uh, Ubisoft were just gonna have to breeze right past 
before they disable my live streaming again. For those that don't follow me on Twitter, they actually did reactivate it just in the nick of time so that I could stream the Nintendo event, you know, like 10 hours after the event ended. Thanks, Ubisoft. <sighs> and I wish I could just breeze past their event and not even mention them, but I do have to talk about Watch Dogs 3 because I am annoyingly excited for this game. <laughs> it's the first time I felt real excitement for the Watch Dogs series ever since the first game was initially revealed. Because it had a similar feeling of what is this new exciting game. Like back then it was, oh I can control the world, like all the technology within Watch Dogs I can manipulate to my will. Then of course we play the game and it doesn't look nearly as good or play nearly as good as they made it seem. But now looking at this third one and that whole mechanic of being able to manipulate any NPC within the game and being told it it is every NPC and they'll have their own branching stories, their own voice acting, their own animations, their own initial induction mission to the Legion. That is a concept I haven't experienced in a game before and it's given me that same initial hype that the first Watch Dogs did. So obviously I am precautious going into it, but it did look like a very modest look at the game. And that does make me hopeful and I am looking forward to it. Uh, obviously I enjoyed all of Square's event. They really saved the entire E3 event for me until Nintendo came along and blew everything out of the water. But here was my favorite parts. Obviously Final Fantasy VII, not much more has to be said about that, but I will add that that statue, the bike and the, it's more of a figure, but I, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, if you know me, you know that I just, I'm a sucker for stealth drops. So the last remnant getting a remaster and then stealth drop on the Switch, you bet your butt I downloaded that as soon as I could. Dragon Quest Builders 2 getting that full in-depth breakdown of the entire game excited me not only because I am hyped and I, I can't tell you how excited I am to play this game on my Switch But also just the fact that it got such a big in-depth look during Square Enix's event made me happy Because it's more people watching getting their eyes on the game and possibly deciding to pick it up and dive into it I want this game to do really really well I just I feel like at this point it's my little baby of a series and I just want to see it grow and do really well Hey buddy Aww What's up, bud? Everyone really liked you in the last one, so I'll hold you for a little bit, but it's super hot in here, so I'm not gonna hold you forever. And then finally, another look at Dragon Quest. This game looks gorgeous on the Switch. They've been playing it on Nintendo's live Treehouse event, and it just looks so crisp, so clean, so beautiful. I love it, I can't wait. Okay, Nintendos, I just went through all of this yesterday. I'm not doing it again because the entire thing excited me. There wasn't a bad announcement. I don't even have a top five, I have a top 10. So I'm just gonna really quickly list the things I'm most excited for and you can go and watch that video. If you haven't seen it already, you probably have. It actually hit the trending tab on YouTube today. Thank you guys for being so freaking cool. But obviously my favorite parts, just to reiterate, what's Luigi's Mansion 3 gameplay, Link's Awakening, getting a date for it too, Trials of Mana, I can't wait, so many RPGs coming to Switch. The Secret of Mana Collection, which I found out and I wanted to mention, yes it's getting a physical all the way in August, but still at least it's on the way. I'm kind of torn between downloading it now, buying the physical as well later, or just waiting. I do have a lot to play, I'm just eager. Of course the Witcher 3, not only because I want to play it on my Switch and it's a fantastic game, but because it made me look good <laughs> after predicting it in my fake direct, and then even talking about it and hyping it up a bunch before E3 because I truly did believe those leaks were real and they ended up being real. It's interesting going back through my comments on those videos and seeing everyone that was like, there's no way that's happening. Woo! <laughs> Astral Chain just looks incredible guys. Again, they were playing it on Treehouse and I was watching it today. It is so smooth, so beautiful. I didn't see any frame rate issues in what they were playing, and by George, I'm excited. By George? <laughs> Getting that Cadence of Hyrule release date, which at this point is tomorrow, and I can't wait. My Nintendo rep never replied to me. <laughs> Actually, it's funny, she replied to me asking, do you want a code? I immediately replied saying, yes, please, and then I got an email back saying, I'm sorry, I'm currently at E3 and away from the office, like one of those default emails you send when you're away. It's like, how did you send me an email then? And when are you back? <laughs> Animal Crossing, that's all I have to say. Nino Kuni, actually, I'm really excited for this. And I want to point something out, and it's weird. I did mention already that the Nino Kuni coming to Switch is just a straight port from the PlayStation 3, but it's actually getting a remaster everywhere else, like PS4 and Xbox One, but it's the same price on Switch and those places. So you're paying the same price for the remaster, but it's not the remaster on Switch. However, it is portable, which, I almost think that is better than getting just a version that's in 1080p and 60 frames. 
For a game like this, I don't think that matters all that much. I don't know. Leave your thoughts down below. Super Lucky's Tail I'm excited for. I think that's a really cool fit for the Switch and not enough people played it on Xbox. Banjo in Smash, obviously. A little thing called Breath of the Wild 2. I think I'm all out of energy screaming about that one. Oh! Oh, what happened to my voice there, Simi? Did you hear that? Oh, and one last thing, actually, that I haven't mentioned. Limited Run Games did their own conference, too. And the coolest thing out of that for me was Transistor is getting a physical with a cool collector's edition. I love Transistor. It's a great game. Highly recommend it. And now you can buy it physically. So that was all the really, really cool things. Now, E3 isn't technically done. As I said, there's a few days left. We might get cool announcements here and there, but I doubt anything that crazy. I'll keep you updated if I do hear anything. Just don't don't expect it tomorrow because I am not doing anything YouTube tomorrow. I need a day. <laughs> now let's go through some of the absolute worst things and you can probably expect what those are. And Simon, you are making me sweaty, so I'm gonna pop you down. I'm sorry, buddy. Don't you look at me like that. Yes, I'm talking about you. And no, this isn't going to be a common thing. Keep an eye out for a dungeon DLC adventure called Scalebreaker, which you'll yeah! see in August. My video's getting claimed right now. There's like zero chance this is monetized. I've lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> we really can't wait to kick some asteroid with you. It looks so bad. We've shown no gameplay yet, but we're dancing on the stage, oh yeah. It doesn't matter if you see the game or not, you're gonna buy it anyway, cause we're Ubisoft. Human NPCs are coming to Fallout 76. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is, this is everything I've ever wanted out of a presentation, a gaming presentation. Microsoft didn't really have anything that was awful, that I hated, that was horrendous. I would say its two biggest blunders were one, not showing any Halo gameplay, and then the other thing was that really, really crappy looking Gears of War mobile game. The game does just look bad, and it's using my one of my favorite IPs, Gears of War, and it's just making the whole thing, it's just, it's just tainting the whole Gears of War franchise, so I could just really do without that mobile game. Um, Bethesda's, all of it. All of it was bad. Every mobile game, Fortnite 76, no Starfield or Elder Scrolls 6, no gameplay of anything other than Doom Eternal and Wolfenstein, and while both those games look good, it just kind of feels like we've seen them. Very average boring event, and the worst offender was the audience. The very clearly either paid off audience, apparently someone said they put microphones right at the front where all of their employees and people that work for Bethesda sit, so that's probably why it sounded so freaking obnoxious. Noxious. And then that one guy, as hilarious as he was, that one guy would not shut the heck up. Keep an eye out for a dungeon DLC adventure called Scalebreaker, which you'll yeah! see in August. Ubisoft, all of it, all of it again. What the heck? Two really terrible events back to back. No freaking gameplay. They disabled me from live streaming, so that alone just ruins them. I wanted to do a tier list of all the game announcements, but I couldn't find one that actually had every game announcement, so I scrapped that idea. And then I thought about doing a tier list for the conferences, but that would have been all about a two minute video. So I'm just gonna put up on the screen what I would have actually done, and then take Ubisoft and just throw it in the trash, because garbage. Way to almost ruin the rest of my E3. It was all dancing, all music, no games, no skull and bones, which was the one thing I wanted from them this year. I guess that game is just in development hell. I have no idea when I'm actually going to get to play that. The only good thing was Johnny Boy and his sweet doggo. You know when the best things of your event are two great actors and a good boy doggo that maybe your event wasn't that good? Um, Square Enix literally had nothing bad. Nothing bad. And then Nintendo's was literally the best roller coaster ride from start to finish. It wasn't the kind of roller coaster that went up and down. It was the kind of roller coaster that started you at the top and then the entire thing was just a free fall all the way to the bottom. Actually, that sounds like it was bad. But what I'm trying to say is it's the going down part that's so exciting. The going up part is the anticipation towards the event. And then as soon as the event went live, it was just screams and fun all the way to the end. That's what I was trying to say. But honestly, my most favorite thing about this entire E3 saga, the number one, right at the top, and I'm not even kidding when I say this, 
It's you guys. And I know that sounds really sappy, but you guys are what made this so fun for me. All the thousands of you that piled into my live streams, whether it was on YouTube or thanks to Ubisoft on Twitch for the second half, interacting with me, leaving comments. I'd never seen my chat go so freaking crazy. And for me, that was just really exciting. I saw so many people making Instagram stories of them watching me with my face and reactions to certain moments that they loved and then sharing screenshots to Twitter, all of that stuff. It just made Made me feel really special and I know that sounds corny and dumb but I really want to thank you for that because it definitely heightened my entire experience and then of course thousands of new people subscribing so if you're watching this if you're one of the new people thank you for joining me on this channel I'll be interested to know what you actually think of my content moving forward because you know I don't always cover E3 but that's why you subscribe so I'm looking forward to seeing how you enjoy everything else take a look around the channel and let me know what you think that's all for me this is probably my last e3 video again unless something else happens so leave your thoughts down below what was your favorite parts what was your least favorite parts and if you don't hair flip all over that subscribe button and double hair flip on the notification button with alerts turned on then at least at least smash that like button <laughs> i love you all my plan is to seriously get this video up and then just turn off youtube for a day or two play some games hang out with kim i'm excited thank you guys and i'll see you uh friday saturday somewhere around there okay bye <laughs>